Hi, uh, my name is Brian Carney. I'm the Associate Dean of Cross-Disciplinary Programs here at University of Toronto. And in that role, we're housed here in this building, which is the Dean Suite. It's technically part of the BAM building, but it's obviously an older portion of the building that was consolidated into this overall offering of uh, things that are sort of faculty-wide in terms of their orientation. So in this uh, office area, we have the vice deans of undergraduate studies, of research, and of graduate studies. And I'm the only associate dean, and I'm the associate dean of this cross-disciplinary programs that link across uh, faculty areas, and they're the things that sort of link uh, specific departments together. I have one of those a little bit different backgrounds in terms of uh, where I've come from. I actually spent my early life wanting to be an oceanographer. I was very keen on understanding the oceans and uh, sort of uh, in love with the idea of being at sea and a Jacques Cousteau kind of life. But I happened to spend my final year of high school in East Africa. And while in East Africa, we had the uh, experience of seeing people whose whole life was dominated by collecting and gathering water. They, they had so little freedom to do anything else. And it was really the reflection in that time that made me think a lot about what I wanted to do and I really wanted to get more practically involved in issues of water supply. I, I have quite a number of students that work with me in some capacity. At the moment, I've got about 10 summer students who were sometimes from Brazil, sometimes from foreign countries, sometimes from Canada working with me. I have about seven PhD students at the moment. I have a couple postdocs and I'm actively involved in a consulting company called Hydrotech and Associates. And through that, I'm sort of nominally involved in half a dozen other supervision uh, situations as well. My students in, uh, are involved in a variety of different projects that cover a whole range of different topics from very technical subjects that include things like unsteady flows and water supply systems to very general uh, topics that deal with the overall balance of the electrical grid, say for um, the way the world develops and even for the province of Ontario. One of the specific projects that we're involved in that I think is particularly interesting is looking again at Niagara Falls. The Niagara Falls is a magnificent tourist attraction. Uh, people come and are amazed by the quality of the water and by the visual effects that happen at Niagara Falls. But what they don't always realize is that the tensions at Niagara Falls are really to do with this issue that we want water for tourism, but we also want water for hydroelectric power. And the, the tensions between that are sort of interesting. But what makes it particularly fascinating at the moment is that Niagara is experiencing more days each year of misting. That is, conditions under which the falls can't be seen because there's so much mist that the falls are generating. And we think that some of that misting could be controlled by diverting less water over the falls and more water through hydroelectric projects. And so there's a possibility at the moment for a win-win-win scenario, where in fact, what you could by having more control, you could enable more renewables to be used within Ontario, you can enable a better use of that resource, and you could actually enhance tourism by making the falls more, um, more um, flexible in terms of the way we're using them. So th there's a really interesting possibilities now that are worth thinking about technically and from a policy perspective. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, that one of the things that motivated me to get into engineering in the first place was in fact a love of water. And that love of water was originally something I experienced when I was at Oceans and, and interest in those things. I still uh, have maintained an interest in oceans and currents and waves. I've uh, created and taught a course called Terrestrial Energy Systems. And it's a kind of an overview of the planet from an energy perspective. Looking at energy as the currency for understanding both conceptually and quantitatively the nature of energetic changes in the planet. So we look at the coupling of ocean systems to atmospheric systems to uh, the overall energy balances of the earth. Uh, just have a lot of fun using energy as, as the currency, not only for engineering, but for the planet as a whole. I think one of the things that makes engineering so interesting in general is that you really think of yourself as being a public servant. You think about the things that you do matter in changing people's lifestyles. If you've ever lived without either water or energy, you realize to what extent those things impact our day-to-day -day life. Water is decisive in terms of determining the quality of life, and so is energy. And so the first beneficiaries that we think of our research are very much 
the public, in the sense of the, the people who are engaged in modern society. But in terms of the clients that we work with, we work a lot with other consulting companies. We work uh, as consultants to consultants in terms of our overall work. We also work directly with municipalities, both on the energy conservation side, the energy supply side, and on the infrastructure water side. And so all of those are, are the components. The other aspect, of course, is uh, it's a tough world at the moment for students, and so we very much want the students to benefit by getting skills that are more employable.